John of York's thunder, thunder, don't forget my son to keep the show moving on. New skin, new bowling, keep showing some skin till the sexual man comes. Ah. The creeps on your brown eye, old man, gripping the cereal tight. Take some sips, show some clips. Blur some wings To hide that you're a sexual man Freaking, freaking man Freaking, freaking man Freaking, freaking man He don't even know me or there even Well, well hello, hello, Melinda <laughs> Well, that was hello. a surprise <laughs> Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to VCR Party Live, the show hey. where we watch VHS tapes. And it's Nick's birthday. The vegan vegan man well, is turning close. forty-seven. Yeah. Well, yeah, close enough. I mean, this is, we always do it before the actual birthday, but of yeah, it's coming up. Um, so yeah, this is the birthday episode. Uh, thank you to Magnus for putting together. He like Magnus put together like five whole minutes with lyrics and everything. <laughs> and yes, we will listen to the rest of the song at the end oh, of the show. I so was wondering. definitely stick around for that. Yeah. Uh, but welcome everybody. I'm Joe. That's Nick. There's uh, Steve. There's George. We watch VHS tapes on this show. Steve, you're going to say something. I said few. You? I wanted to. Oh. Uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of that song. I was. Really oh, it's it's that. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gets even better. So, um, all right. What uh, happy birthday, Nick? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're going to celebrate with, uh, well, let's start off with a, a found footage festival classic to get us in the mood. This is, um, well, I'll play the intro and then I'll explain. All right, here we go. Intro time. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. All right, we all know Harvey Sid Fisher. Uh, he's, we found this video in Los Angeles. He's a singer songwriter who loved astrology. He wrote an original song for each sign of the Zodiac and had an interpretive dancer join him at the public access studio to record this demo. Um, went back to our original VHS version to play the full version of the Aquarius song, which is my sign. I put a lot of faith in astrology, as you all know. Yep, and, you uh, you really, you, uh, you, you're you on board with all that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual uh yeah, aliens, ghosts, supernatural, yep. like all that. You're like really on board with all that. Yep. And everyone born in my month from Adolf Hitler to Mahatma Gandhi has the same personality. So uh, <laughs> here's a little bit more about that from uh, from Harvey Sid Fisher. I am an Aquarian. I am an Aquarian. I am an Aquarian. It's like water. I am an Aquarian. Aquarius. Oh, yeah. Very interpretive. Extremely. I like it when interpretive dance is really easy to interpret. You are gregarian. Thank you. Humanitarian Aquarian. It's Anthropian. If you have good Surly in. I'll thank you and smile and then I'll do it my way. And I really love Alf. I may exaggerate. <laughs> he did eat that one, right? Itty bitty yeah. bit, but it's only when I really need to emphasize. I am an Aquarian. I am an Aquarian. I am an Aquarian. Uh, that's all you. Uh, everything is yeah. you. Yeah. And I like how he does his own fade out here because they didn't have, or there was one on the song, but you know, how do you stop? How do you stop singing? Because he would go into the next. Right. Whatever the next sign is, Taurus. So he does his own. Uh, let's watch that again. I am an Aquarian. I am an Aquarian. Hey, he, must, stop, stop he must have been. He must have been uh, lip syncing, though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. During the, right. during those, yeah. Oh boy. But um, God bless him. Harvey Fisher yelled at me while at a driving range, and <laughs> I still love him. I still love him. I, you know, I still I, I have this golf ball. Uh, I still go golfing with him every time I'm in L.A. And look at he he signed like he draws drawings on golf balls and then gives them to his friends. And I have about a half dozen of them over there. So didn't give yeah. me one. He didn't give didn't, you one, huh? No, uh. no. I guess he didn't like uh, how I wasn't taking direction from him. I guess I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's uh, yeah. We show VHS tapes. Uh, we got a bunch to show you. And uh, tonight's gonna take a sexy turn because it is uh, our first episode officially in February. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. We celebrate Hunktober all October. So all this month, babes, and uh, we get some good ones. Steve, who are you selling out to? It looks like you're selling out to something kind of fun here. I definitely am. I'm going to cover up so you can see the full uh, background there. I'm selling out to uh, Karina. Um, she's a Melinda and artist with a red bubble store, and you'll see that in the top left corner um, of her of what the uh, address is. There we go. I got the words finally. Um, and she wanted to appreciate some. She wanted to get some word uh, help getting some word out. Boy, this is going well for uh, next birthday. Love. Uh, it. Can't ask know, for a better present. Yep. <laughs> Alf and Rem with our design is up for sale, uh, and she wanted to also get more eyes on her social, which I'll show in just one moment. Um, but it's at redbubble.com slash people slash fat rabbit slash shop. Now, did fat Marina rabbit. win the Nick Sips uh, she, she, license she, plate? She won the uh, boop fan. Yes. So you'll oh, see she, oh, there. Yeah, there she oh, the boop the fan. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, that's what I thought. Okay. That's Meow Linda Alastor with the boop fan. Oh, there it is. Yeah, plate. boop fan. Yeah, Alistair? I have probably. to, uh, I have to go into. Her, uh, oh, okay. Her uh, Instagram. There we go. So it's going to be a long show for me today, guys. <laughs> for, for, for viewers of the show who were part of the whole license plate. Um, oh, by the way, when is, I assume your nephew has his up now. Um, and if I, you know what? I need to follow up. I did not today. So. <laughs> okay. So um, to do this. We're, we're, we're hearing a lot of the same old thing coming from you over it's there. It's seven like, months, oh, yeah, I think. Gotta, yeah. yeah. I'm going to um, text him right now. But uh, so I had to switch mine from Boop Fan to Nick Sips, which is to me more embarrassing because it has my own name on it. And I have my first um, I'm taking my car to the mechanic tomorrow at 8 a.m. And he always he, when he comes in, he goes, hey, Nikki. First time I met him, he calls me Nikki. He, he just gave me a nickname without any prompting or anything. And um, so I can only imagine because last time he's like he goes, you better Boop Fan. And uh so he commented on the last one, and I can only imagine what he's going to think about Nick Sips tomorrow. So How, what are you going to tell him? him? What are you going to tell him? I was, I don't know. I haven't thought it out. I think it might be like, yeah, it's a, it's a joke. It's a long story. Yeah, I got nothing uh, but time, pal. I got nothing but time. <laughs> Let's say so his name is Bob Hedges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I get it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so it's going to be, I really need to find a mechanic who's like a Melinda that I don't have to explain anything to, but unfortunately my guy in Queens is not that. So no, uh, no, he's probably, tell him about the show though. Have him tune in, like get him on, get him on the message boards. Have yeah. him on Saturday morning sometime. Oh, <gasps> that's a great idea. Watch my Turbo mechanic team. on? Yeah. yeah. Oh, now, that's not the, accurate. We, Turbo team. That's not, uh, that doesn't happen. We could watch the Bigfoot, um, a cartoon with him. With him, yeah. Let's do it. Cars. Talk yeah. to him about it. Ask him if we can, because I want to have my dentist on at some point. Because my dentist, <laughs> my dentist is really funny. Why like, don't you have f- f- the four gastroenterologists who give the colonoscopies do, on? Do, do you guys remember what we used to try to get celebrities on the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to have a couple of occasionally. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, yeah. And then, like, uh, what episode do you show them to get them on board? Well, not last week. That was way too inside base. You know what? I guess we just won't show it. I think it's just Kyle Mooney at this point. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it, but now it's going to be dentists and mechanics uh, yep. going forward. So, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that, too. Um. All right, let's get into uh, let's get into some scimitar. Nick, you you uh, queued yeah. something up here for the scimitar. Scimitar is going to be in our volume ten found footage festival touring show because we love this production company from Minnesota that just crapped out videos that were of the ilk special interest tapes, and um, they did occasional movies, but it was mostly. I don't know how to videos, monster truck tapes, things like that, and uh, we found a, a promo that had like a little one minute promos for all sorts of scimitar tapes all under ten dollars by the music land and sam goody mall stores which apparently a lot of uh scimitar videos were sold there so here's the latest and, installment and stolen and stolen of and, course. and shoplifted yes the music land group is proud to present the scimitar video sample reel see highlights from a few of the great special interest videos from scimitar entertainment all available now at any music land sam goody or discount record store Pick up I your never, pen and make a list. I never got to to shoplift from a discount records. The other two, yes, but like discount records, I never got to shoplift from them. Are they not could, still? Could we bail still. them out of chapter eleven just so you could shoplift from them? Just one like a make a wish kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Scimitar Entertainment is about to show you a few of their best. a few of their best 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> when you open with them, something like that, yeah. This is Nick's excitement corner material right here. Electronic drum kit. Nobody's ever died in a scimitar video. Oh, I guarantee it. You think so? I'm sure, yeah. so, I'm sure somebody died watching it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Both under ten dollars. Crash and burn and car wars. Okay. The Music Land Group hopes you enjoyed this sample video reel. Now take your list of great scimitar releases and head over to your local music and shove Land them up your ass. or discount record store. <laughs> we'll have those movie releases and more in stock and at a great low price. That's what they should have said. <sighs> they, you know what? If I were to get a, a tattoo, I would get the scimitar logo. I think I would. I think it would look pretty cool, like right on right on your forearm or on and your bicep. What Patreon level will that happen? Hmm. Uh, I don't know, Tattoos? like thirty-eight thousand dollars. I would do it at thirty-eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, once we get up to that. So let me. Uh, you know, I think we've talked about this on previous things, but let me uh, browse to the old uh, store.foundfootagefest.com, and I believe if we go to apparel, we can see. Look at this. this oh yeah, is the uh, scimitar tee right here. Yeah, it's got the fade in the middle. It's a cool color, and. Uh, it's yeah, the, yeah, there it is. Uh, and it's that soft cotton too, and it's uh, very soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah, th this is the shirt that you. I mean, th they're the masters of special interest. You should be wearing their shirt on your body at all times. So With pride. Yes. Um. So yeah, pick up one of those. Um. I want to do a celebrity bullshit. Um, okay. Buckle up. This is a sort of birthday edition celebrity bullshit video here. Hmm. With a new. Uh, come on, you can do it. Here we go. Hit it on the side, maybe. There we go. That worked. That did it. Hey, Coolio. Thank you, Coolio Roberts. Did the new one? Uh, <laughs> uh, not Jim Lehrer. The, uh, no, Bill close. Moyers. Bill Moyers. Yeah, Bill yeah. Moyers. We, we talked about throwing. <laughs> a a Moyers guy. Yeah. We talked about throwing Moyers on there. I think a couple celebrity <laughs> bullshits ago, and uh, I went on to Google Images and I was able to find a picture of Bill Moyers. So okay. there he is. Not time to put a border on it, huh? Yeah. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> PBS doesn't a, have the budget for it's that. A busy week, yeah. Uh, but but Bill Moyers is one of Tinseltown's <laughs> finest, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I'd he's say, a yeah. raw dogger, if anyone. Yeah, he's a raw dogger. He was always <laughs> known true. as a raw dogger. Bill, Bill raw dogger office. Moyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so this this is a celebrity bullshit that you you, you won't believe your eyes. So uh, this is it comes from this video: train hard, fight hard, fight easy. So what it says: train hard, fight easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a self defense video. It's for policemen. Like okay. I guess policemen would watch this uh, to to be trained into. I think it was like snipers, like how to stop a sniper or how to be a sniper or something like that. And uh, the, you're never going to believe the celebrities in this one. You're not. Just take a guess. Just name a celebrity, and let's see if they're in there. Here's here's a hint, Nick. I did the. I put this celebrity in here for you. Mm, so. Okay. Um. I'll say. Hmm. Benji Gregory. Hmm. Never even heard that name in my life. <laughs> it's the kid on the Alf. Oh, <laughs> everybody knows that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's probably him. Okay. 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 I don't feel good about my guess. George, Steve, Mark Lynn Baker from Perfect Strangers. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Not Jason bad. Bateman. Okay. What, why Jason Bateman? Why, what's the connection to Nick on that one? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you high tonight, Steve? I do I like wish Jason I was. Bateman. I think he's a great actor. There it is. All right, here's a train hard, fight easy. Okay. There we go. Hi, I'm Benji Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> Keep a keen eye open here. Keen okay. eye. Okay. So the drill is designed for them to observe a bunch of faces, <laughs> identify their bad guys, and separate them from the. Whoa! <laughs> so they, they, they have these books. Huh? 
He's for, one of the bad guys? They're trying to spot the assassins and they're trying to communicate <laughs> with each other about who the assassin is. And then uh, and then they look at these books with like celebrity clip art. And guys so, are hostages. Was that Yanni? <laughs> that was the first one between Yanni? Between each other so more. they understand okay. who's who and make up some sort of battle plan so that if they do have to address the targets, they can do it accurately. <laughs> The targets will pop up at random over a five-minute period. They're up for 10 to 15 seconds. During those periods of time, they need to identify who's who. There's also the need to... Two sets of eyes are better than one. But one guy I want that doesn't point. pick up. Or, maybe his is that Lionel Richie? It's it caught his Carlin? attention. What the circumstances Carlin are Santana? ahead of them. I think it's then one guy trying to see That's it Yanni. all and communicate it all. And That's a hundred percent Yanni. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that it was definitely Weird Al. Weird Al. You've <laughs> got to send this to our buddy Ethan and Dave who do the uh, Weird Al podcast because they I doubt they know about this one. No, oh, this yeah. Carlin at the end too. The, well, so look it. So there's a yeah, that's definitely Yanni. It's 100 percent Yanni. And then yeah, I think that's got to be George Carlin. Yeah, that should yeah. have been the name of the episode. 100 percent Yanni. <laughs> I can change it after. Yeah. So anyway, that's a uh, that's a uh, one of the weirder uh, celebrity wow. bullshits of all time. Yeah. That my that's my favorite one to date. That's Tinseltown's wow. finest. Right that there. really is. Yeah. No Jason Bateman's though. No, enough. Yeah. Too bad because I have such a personal connection to him. <laughs> the, the Melinders are guessing that's Santana. I think so too. Oh, so was that, that was who that was? was? Carlos Santana. Yeah. Hold on, let me let me bring it back. Okay, yeah, here. Hold on. Let's uh, <laughs> let me uh. Yeah. Okay. I think that is. I think it's got to be right. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's Carlos yeah. Santana. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Featuring Rob Thomas. Yeah. But man, <laughs> I want a little I, inset. I want that booklet so bad. Jason Don't Adams you? wants limited edition shirts. Just put that, those images. Oh, just put like yeah. Oh. That was like yeah. weird clip art. I don't know how they found <laughs> no. that. That was fantastic. I was not yeah. expecting that. Wow, it's already a birthday miracle. Wow, well, uh, it's, it's yeah. about to get better. It's about to get even better. So, you know, I do birthday calls for, sure. for your birthday every year. Right, you buy their uh, local business owners. Um, uh, I'm always nice. Happy birthday! I'm always nice. I call when it's the least busy time. Like if it's mm -hmm. uh, bazingas, say I don't call right at noon. I don't call at five o'clock. I call at like three thirty when it's slow. That's nice. And I'm nice. And if they're busy, I don't. I, I know. I know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable watching my phone calls, where I ask <laughs> businesses and. Uh, stores related to found footage festival uh to uh to wish nick a happy birthday um but i'm always nice about it and i i don't want to bother these people honestly i'm trying to be nice about it and i'm always 100 percent honest with them so anyway back to bazingas where was i bazingas okay so todd hansen who wrote the song nick is a sexual man and uh what else oh he wrote nick sips too he's a, he's a hit maker he visited bazingas in janesville and he got his photo taken with a Melinda shirt there. I don't know if you can see, but he's wearing a Melinda shirt. He didn't go inside. He went to a bowling alley next door and he was talking to the bowling alley owner. And he said, he was asking them about Bazingas naturally. And they said, yeah, the, the owner of Bazingas is the vice president of NBC sports. What? The person who owns Bazingas, that, huh. that shitty like sports bar in like suburban Janesville mm -hmm. is like the vice president of NBC Sports in New York, like he owns Bazinga. That's odd. And I was like, "There's no way that can't. That has to just be like a rumor." Mm -hmm. So, anyway, what what I do for your birthday, Nick, is I call up Bazingas mm -hmm. and I try to get uh, them to say happy birthday to you. And it's been mixed do results. You, do you know if they uh, uh, serve Miller Lite there? Are do are you? Um... Do you know about their uh, draft selection at all? Is there any indication that would? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that they do. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Everybody knows. Yeah. Um, all right. So here, I'm just gonna take a look at last year's call mm -hmm. first to Bazingas, and, and then again, I'm, uh, how did we first find this? Were you in Janesville and you took a picture of it, or? I you, I was wondering that too. I was wondering that too. Like, did, how did? Because we used to call them up all the time for. Yeah. Uh, for, the the for, game shows. For the game shows, yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I don't remember the origin, but anyway, this is a sports bar in a town where our buddy Jakester lives. I also okay. like how Joe adds an S. There's no S there. It's Bazinga. Well, it's uh, like how you call it Barnes and Nobles or Best Buys, even though it's not. C you know. Cubs Foods. Yeah. 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 I don't call it Best Buys, so that's new. To <laughs> <me>. <laughs> 
don't know if anybody calls it Best Buys. Uh, all right. Uh, here's uh, my last year's call to Bazingas. I'll show you how that went. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Bazinga. How can I help you? Yeah. Hey, my name's Joe. I'm calling from VCR Party. And I ca we call you guys every so often uh, whenever we have a question about, I guess, anything. It's my buddy Nick's birthday coming up. And he's never actually been to Bazinga's. His grandma lives in Janesville. And someday, first of all, he's vegan. Do you guys have vegan options? Salad. Salad. I'm wondering if it'd be possible for you to say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Bazinga's. We hope you stop in sometime when you're visiting your grandma or something like that. Happy birthday, Nick. Yep. Uh, happy birthday. in Bazinga and when you're visiting your grandma. Yep. And happy 20th episode. Yep. All right, gotta go. We have busy lunch. So that was that was last year's. Okay. So she was, yeah, she was. That's she was, when you had, did call at noon. I did. I I, I right. didn't know that you weren't supposed to do that. Today okay. I called at three thirty. Okay. And uh, so here's here's how that phone call went. Hey, my name's Joe. I'm uh, calling from VCR party on behalf of my buddy Nick. It's his birthday. <laughs> and uh, we always call you guys for like whenever we have questions. I, I've been in there once before. Uh, Nick's grandma went there one time, and uh, we love Bazingas. I'm wondering if there's any way you can say happy birth, happy 47th birthday, Nick, from all of us here at Bazingas. May 47 be the best year of your life, or something like that. Holy crap, that's a lot for me to remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can put it in your own words. Okay, his name is Nick. Yep. Okay. Ready when you are. Happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Bazingas. May your number 47 be the best of your life. Yes, that was awesome. That was perfect. Hey, I got another question for you. Is the owner of Bazingas uh, the vice president of NBC Sports? One of the owners, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice guy? Very nice guy. Nice. All right. Well, uh, I don't think I have any more questions. There it is. Confirmed. Wow. The nice. vice president of NBC Sports is a co-owner of Bazinga's. There you have wow. it. Wow. So that, was, that's, was uh, Big Bang Theory an NBC show? Does anybody I know? I think it was. Yeah, I think it there was. There might be some sort of collusion going on I think there. there CBS. CBS. Promote yeah. the brand. Oh, okay. Well, what, then. What, what I want to point out is the journalism that, that we do on this show. Like, mm -hmm. journalism is important to us. We're journalists, and we find out information like this. It used to be about the laughs, but no more. It's it's about getting to the bottom of, of mm -hmm. stories that not many people are interested in. Exactly, Nick. Well, um, was that, was uh, that a birthday? Was that, that a birthday? Great. Uh... It was polite. Uh, it didn't make me uncomfortable, and uh, you got some information. I was happy, and uh, boy, the wait staff, va va boom. I... Uh... <laughs> Uh, oh well, I'll be honest. That was a, that was a Google huh? image. That was a Google oh, image. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, but there are two more phone calls coming up in the show, so oh, stay good. tuned for those, and uh, we'll see how comfortable those are. Okay, let's get into some flying windows. Okay, I'm giving away what the uh, Flying Windows is from. This is from a House in the Rock video, an informational video from Wisconsin's number one tourist attraction, the House in the Rock. Uh, this was a, a, an attraction built by a guy who thought he was a competitor of Frank Lloyd Wright, but was really just a weirdo. He's a madman. He's, he's an absolute a, madman. Yeah. If, if you're ever in Spring Green, Wisconsin, go to this place because this guy's a nutcase. And like stay that, at the Don Q in right now, uh, right? Yes. Or no, uh, no. Uh, yeah. And uh, so he basically started off by building this eccentric house that had like an infinity point that went over a cliff there in Wisconsin and then just started collecting things. And it's just like calliope music and automatons and a giant uh, squid and whale that take up a uh, four story building. And it takes you all day to go through. It's absolutely mesmerizing, incredible and stupid. And I love it. And this is a video I watched in the office uh, the other day with some of the uh, some of the, some of our helpers, our archivists going through the collection, helping log it. And I was like, oh, flying windows. So here we go. One of my favorite attractions and some of my favorite flying windows. Nice. Now and forever, the house on the rock is guaranteed to instill in you a sense of awe and wonder. From the beginning, Flying the mask. attention of visitors is drawn to the incredible amounts of objects that combine to create the mind-boggling, inspiring, intriguing effect 
that is the house on the rock. Not the, co- not the quality of objects, Alex the Alex Jordan quantity. desired to give the curiosity seekers who bought a ticket an experience they could not acquire anywhere else in the world. And indeed, this is what he ultimately achieved. Flying symbols? Because Alex Jordan was not this, just a collector. This is a gift shop purchase, right? I mean, like somebody bought this in the yeah, gift shop, right? Yeah, must have been. I mean, I'm no. sure I found it at a Goodwill in Madison or something. Yeah, yeah. He was a collector of collections. He was Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> While parents taste the fine local wines, children can sample the sparkling. Oh, that local juice. Wisconsin wine. Mm, yep, extremely sweet, and uh, it's like blueberry wine. Enjoy, it's, it's mom. Ba- it's basically Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> And don't forget, an exclusive assortment of House on the Rock souvenirs oh, and mementos shirt. are available at both the main Same. gift shop and one called Uniquely Ours. Uniquely Ours. Whoa. This is going too fast. They need to slow down. Wow. <laughs> I like what's in those flying windows, too. Oh, I didn't know they had a jingle. Toe tapper more than you can ever imagine. The house on the rock. Oh wow, that's a great yeah. video. I want to watch that whole thing. Well, it's mostly boring, but that part, yeah. uh, those parts are are very exciting, and the attraction is uh, not to be missed. Book a trip now. It's uh, it's absolutely incredible. That is good stuff. Um, Nick, how's your uh, birthday uh, going so far? Are you happy with it? Extremely happy. Yeah, I hope nothing ruins it. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into uh, some hot little. <laughs> Ravioli's time. You want to get some hot little raviolis? Sure. All right, here we go. Well, no, actually, Mixed can I change my mind? <laughs> ravioli. I'd rather not. Uh, it's too late. I don't know how to stop it. Raviolis. Nick, Nick. I have no idea how to stop it. Raviolis. This is their normal. Raviolis. It's Nick's hot raviolis. Nick, 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 I'm pretty good at like writing music. Maybe I should actually like pursue that. Like I'm not I'm not terrible, right? You're really good at any Nick based song. <laughs> <laughs> you do have your music. You, you gotta know your lane <laughs> and you stick to it. Thank you. No, you're right. I do. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Um more well, Nick songs coming up. Let me start off with a, a birthday video. This is one called um you know you're over 40 and animated. I think they should put animated in quotes here because uh, it's barely animated. It's um, these videos you get it or the, the I guess the videos, but the books you'd get at um, Spencer Gifts. And it always it was by this artist. And it was a series of jokes and, and pencil drawings like this. And it would be like, you're over 40. There's one about different kinds of farts and things like that. And I guess in... What year was this? 1991. They're like, let's just make VHS versions. We'll put in the bare minimum of effort to animate it. And bare minimum to write jokes, too. Um, so, yeah, here's a, a little sampling of this. I don't know how much this was, but this is a, a, a nine-minute video. That's what you got for your money on this. You know you're over 40 when. Okay, here's some quality jokes. You know you're over 40. It's really not so great. You know you're over 40 and gaining It wasn't high five though. You always feel drowsy and hate to leave your chair. Your back is really hurting and you're losing lots of hair. Happy birthday, haven't changed a bit. Happy birthday, keep it nice and fit. Over 40, still in your prime. Growing old is not a crime. I cut the I cut that song in like by a third, by the way. It's much, <laughs> much longer. You know you're over 40 when you feel like the morning after. And you can swear you haven't been anywhere. Okay. That's true. Okay. <laughs> the morning there. after. You start wearing boxer shorts instead of the jockey type. You notice colored underwear in the ads, but yours are all white. You learn to control your really computer. Really competing with the soundtrack here, too. <laughs> it's really trying to... He doesn't really talk over the music. 
What didn't you get, Joe? No, I just, I guess I, it, it was just more of a fact, wasn't it? I don't know if it was as much of a joke as it was a fact. Just like, yeah. You, uh, other people boxers and, yeah. Yeah. Your underwear gets less exotic, I guess. Um, yeah, a lot of these are just facts. You learn to control your drinking. You even start doing things that are good for yourself, like eating yogurt. You stop making excuses for sexual malfunction and realize you're tired. You turn out the lights for economic reasons instead of romantic ones. He's really, he's really selling the jokes there. <laughs> you know what? Instead the, of romantic <laughs> ones. <laughs> what is that voice called? That's a very specific <laughs> smurmy something. Um, like 80s comic, I would say. Yeah. Um, it, this is making me appreciate Jeff Foxworthy. At least his mm -hmm. jokes made sense. You might be a redneck if, you know, yeah. like there was a joke. But like this is like yeah. you're over 40 if you yeah. go to bed early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're tired in the morning, you <laughs> might be over 40. There we go. That's a decent Foxworthy. You realize your contemporaries are all making more money than you. What? Okay. You <laughs> all right. That's uh... <laughs> You realize that <laughs> only half <Is> can. <laughs> I don't. Know. Well, that's a, that's what everybody once they're forty realizes. Like that's like a truism yeah. across the board for everybody who turns forty. I think so. Yeah. Okay. If you realize your contemporaries <laughs> are making more money than you, you might in fact be over forty. You develop a taste for brand flakes. You realize certain what? foods just aren't Those compatible are with here. your gastrointestinal system. No, you're over 40. So the, the waiter didn't react to that. Oh, no. Your morning start with Just prune juice, forever feeling cold. Birdie you risk think you're old fashioned, but oh, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Can you imagine? This is probably like 30 bucks to give to somebody on their 40th birthday or their 47th at Spencer's, and that's what they got. And, and they watch it, and they just watched it stone faced. <laughs> probably played it at the party, and everyone's like, I thought it'd be different. I thought it'd be a little more animated. That was going to be more Jeff Foxworthy like. <laughs> Uh, all right. Do you want to do? Uh, do you want to watch a video or do you want to watch uh, another phone call? Let's watch a video. Yeah, let's go. Let's do some. Video. Okay, it's baby. It's February here, and uh, I thought I would uh, play this for you, Nick. This is a video called "Hot and Heavy" mm. uh, or "Hard and Heavy." Okay. Uh, the volume one, 1991 video calendar. Have you seen this one before? Have no. you seen this one up on the shelf? It looks yeah. like a scimitar. Uh, no, it's not. Mm, okay. No, not a scimitar. Who put this out? I don't know. Director's International Video. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. uh, it looks pretty cool. Babes is in a really big font there. Yeah. Uh, I digitized this, and uh, so they go through each calendar month with a different babe, and I decided to go with uh, February because it's your uh, the month Thank we're you. in, and it's your uh, your birthday month. So uh, here's hard and heavy. It starts off strong. <laughs> Happy February, everybody. Her name's Tuscany or that, yeah, her name's Tuscany. Do, her name is that... Tuscany February. Oh, right. okay. Yep. Um, do you think she was born with the name Tuscany? You think that's her birth name? <laughs> probably, right? It's gotta yeah, be. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, she's a Tammy, right? She's a Tammy. Probably. When I do fish here, I always catch fish. <laughs> you get to find out that she likes fishing. Too. Mm -hmm. By the way, just a little tip for you guys. The best time to fish is at the end of the day. It's peaceful. It's quiet. It's the greatest time to fish. Guaranteed. Look up with their posture. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, good question. I think it was probably a camera person's direction. Yeah. Wait, what's this a gotcha 1999? This video gotcha is 1991. Summer. Yeah, gotcha summer 1999. Maybe they're recording 99. this in the future. Huh. Wow. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> hey, I've heard of frozen food, but this is ridiculous. Oh, it's like a it's gag. 
It's like a de- decapitated trout. Like half of its head is falling off. You know that fish is over forty. <laughs> oh, good one. Uh huh. When I'm dating someone, uh, one of the things I look for in a guy is a sense of humor. Hey, look it's at me. This. Yeah. This looks perfect. I told you guys I always catch something when I come here. <laughs> There we go. Just a, it's just a quick clip. Look at the band uh, is called Loud, Loud and, Clear. and Clear. And look at look at some of their uh, song titles on here. Song titles: Baby Wants to Rock, Body <laughs> oh. Heat, Wait, Vanishing is this Overlord Point. or Loud and Clear. I can't tell. Ghosts of Summer, uh, Goodbye Eyes, Running Wait, Down they the spelled Night. Rhythm wrong. Uh, did they? Yeah, <laughs> they sure did. Is that an asterisk before Love Waits? Oh yeah, they did. Is that like uh, a? I don't know. Oh yeah, a Prince a Prince song with a symbol. Oh yeah, I think it is. Yeah. So anyway, uh, waiting for the roar and yeah, rhythm wow. and booze. Rhythm I've and never booze. Never seen that one. There's the asterisk <clears throat> comes through right there at the end. Yeah. They explain what that it was, was. Written by somebody different. Yeah. Oh, oh got, got it. Got okay. It, it was. Um, like, yeah. yeah. Nick, you're gonna like this one. So I have it all digitized. You're gonna. Man, yeah. each month we could play a new one. Mm-hmm. Well, I teased this last week. Because uh, I think uh, when I first discovered this clip on uh, an Instagram uh, that I follow called Video Poison, everybody should follow Video Poison, another weirdo like us who finds old VHS clips and uh, posted a video of a, a of a like a woman in lingerie with an unusual hobby. Um, I don't want to uh, give it away for people who haven't seen it. And I messaged the person and said, hey, what's this from? And they said, it's from a, a video called Erotic Women, and good luck trying to find a video called that. The Melinda's chipped in. Uh, they tried to you know, find old listings on eBay, and then I just set a Google alert, and it came up last week, and uh, I got it last Monday, and this was the video in question, and uh, it was incredible. And we watched it on our EP mode last Thursday. I invite everyone to join our Patreon to, to watch that one. We couldn't even it's post good. it on YouTube. No, it's good. Yeah, but there's a lot of nudity. But man, it was like better than I thought it was going to be. And we played it at uh, Philly. We had a show in Philly last Saturday. And uh, you, you cut together a clip for that and it killed. It absolutely killed. So this might be video of the year. I don't know. I think that we have it's a contender early, already. But yeah, let's uh, let's it's take kinda, a look. It's not a it's not a good look like to have like erotic women be the winner of the, you know, with like four dudes. Like, I don't know. It's not a good look. The optics aren't great. But it's a great video, so I don't know. Yeah. What, what do we do? I uh, wonder if we ever cared about optics. Let's uh, <laughs> let's watch erotic women with some heavy duty blurring. It took me a week to blur everything. <laughs> you know, you I hired ILM. Yeah, it's Wait, really a nice. Place. Back back up. Sorry, I stepped on that. Okay. You know, I think we found it. Yeah, it's really a nice place. It is. It's the perfect place to meet erotic women. A forest. A state park? <laughs> Erotic blurring. Hello, I'm Frank. And I'm Kim. Welcome to our search for What's erotic name? women. Frank, somebody in our Discord is already talking about going in a couple's costume for the Halloween contest. <laughs> You're as Frank and Kim. Well, good, so. Nick, remember, we keep talking about uh, another Rank the Franks. Remember, oh, we? Uh, I, yeah. I, think, I think that we have a new <laughs> Frank. He's, he's my favorite Frank because he's got that Troy McClure delivery where he's like, hi, I'm Frank. What I a think, wonderful place to meet erotic women. I think we have I think we have four more Franks that we can throw into the rank right of Franks. Franks. Yeah, we got to get the. Uh, let's rank those on? Franks. All right, let's rank those Franks. Kim. Welcome to our search for erotic women. You've probably met interesting our women search. at parties, the store and at work. And you might learn their likes, their dislikes, what movies they enjoy, political views and all that. But what about a woman's personal side. Hi, my name's Rhonda. I'm from Montana, and I'm glad to be here with you. In my large recliner. Wait, what, what, what kind of dumbbell is that? Like, what do you have to have a handle on the dumbbell? Isn't the dumbbell already a handle? <laughs> it's actually, and I feel like this is a half pound. I don't know what kind of toning this is going to do. What is it a handle for a dumbbell, though? I don't get that. You have to do 300 reps, I think, to... When I'm riding across the water, I like to feel that powerful Good motor blurry. beneath me. What are those? Are these dogs or lions? or And what are they on? I'm going with is the that, dog is, on is a, that like, a pirate ship. 
I'm saying <laughs> a, 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 a gibbon's head on a dog's body. I think they're griffins, and I think it's the uh, the boat from Fitzcarraldo, the uh, Werner Herzog oh, movie. Yeah, <laughs> with uh, Klaus Kinski. Klaus Kinski's got right behind him. I and, see. I think this griffins. is. I think this is Captain Ron's boat. Um, so. Okay. And I'm gonna say jackals. Rhonda looked like she was having fun on the water. I completely agree. And now let's go to our next. <laughs> Frank agreed. With Kim, that it looked like um, she's had, Ron was know. having fun on the water. I think he's going to be a low-ranking Frank, actually. He's pretty <laughs> bland. <laughs> I disagree, Kim. I think she was doing it for the cameras. Rhonda looked like she was having fun on the water. I completely agree. And now let's go to our next erotic woman, Maury. Uh, I think she's she got an paid to do decorator that. and is still looking for Mr. Wright. Maureen is easy to get along with and from head to toe has quite an impressive figure. One of the most exciting things I think right now in my life is that I started um, doing interior decorating and interior decorating I clowns. I've wanted to do for a very long time. I've always had excellent taste, so um, she's painted I've a clown doll. Working with colors, and I've always had excellent taste in clown and dolls. Just everything, but to get paid for it is even better. We're gonna send this off to the Clown Doll Museum in Plainview, Nebraska. <laughs> On the they, VCR party shelf. They're working on the new wing. It hasn't been <laughs> built yet, but <laughs> uh, Nick's dad's going to go to Clown Days to get to the bottom of it. Have you ever paddled? <laughs> she was in a pool. She yeah, was in a she, pool. She, she was in a pool. pool. <laughs> and then Kim, Kim asks uh, Frank a, uh, I think, a probing <clears throat> question here. Okay. Have you ever paddled a canoe? I have, but it's been quite some time. Maybe Maureen could give me some canoe lessons. Anyway, it's time to take lessons in love from Tara. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a bottom-ranking Frank. He is not going to crack. He's, he's not going to crack the top three. There's not a chance. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trevor McClure. Now for lessons in love with Cheryl. You know, I mean, he's just got that. All right. To take lessons in love from Tara. I'm the kind of person that likes to make patients feel more comfortable, more at ease when they're having their exam. Even if it's a simple exam, they're usually quite anxious. One instance, uh, there was a, a professional cyclist that had come in through the emergency room and uh, had a probable uh, pelvis or, or hip fracture. And we weren't really sure what? because he was in a lot of pain and shock and what? we didn't know what, Why would he go there which for the... side it might be. Why would he go yeah. there for the dentist exam? Well, I think that's <laughs> as close as they could get to what she is, is just a radiology assistant. So that's, yeah, she's telling a story from her radiology days while enacting some sort of dental scenario. I believe he's suffering from male gaze. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Which side it might be on. So I, I took an x-ray of his pelvis, and the penis was pointing over to the... The That's hip that was term. fractured in, uh, in radiology, we call that the Throckmorton sign. Mm. The penis points to the, to the site of the injury, and it's always accurate. We hope you had a nice time and enjoyed what each person had to say. It was a good opportunity to explore the attitudes and the experiences of these women. That's it for the show. Worst Thanks again Frank. for being with us. I love this Goodbye. Frank. It was a good opportunity to get to know about the experiences and the hobbies. I think any video that has a personal watercraft provided by credit is okay in my book. And uh, and if it's provided by Ricky D, I mean, that's who <laughs> that's who you want to provide you with a watercraft. Ricky, yeah. some guy named Ricky. Oh boy, that was good. So that is, uh, yeah, that's erotic women. Now there is an erotic women part two, according to um, an Amazon listing, but <laughs> not, not available. But I can only imagine what delights and, and surprises that awaits. We got to schedule a rank to Franks because I think we're ready to go. I think we're, we we got the one Frank that we needed, and I think we're set to pop. He's not going to do well, but uh, uh, I don't want to give away to uh, too much of Babe Rory. But I found another video just today of another Babe um, nude on a water ski. So it must have been a thing in the early '90s. Well, um, and there's hard so, and heavy, yeah. which is like they're they're doing like I like fishing, and here's some here's me fishing, and they try. I the think it's so curves and... felt less guilty because you yeah. got to know them a little bit. That's my. I think it's for for people who had guilt, but also were horny. It's That's like my... beyond. It's like beyond softcore. It's like a, a step further than softcore. They're naked, but they're not doing anything. They're like yeah. 
doing bits. Yep. Um, Nick, do you remember when you stole the uh, Incredible Hulk Sega game from a shop co in 1994 when you were 18 years old in college? Not ringing uh, a bell, no. No, you don't remember that? No. Well, you did. And um, so Shopco was, it, it's a chain across, it used to be a chain across Wisconsin, and it was like a, basically like a Walmart. And uh, Nick there was shopping one, one There day. were one Hulk game sale away from staying in business, and uh, I feel bad about that. It didn't work out. So uh, Nick shoplifted from me, he, he got caught. Uh, it was very embarrassing. He shamed uh, himself, his family, me, even, even me. Um, and uh, I don't know if he's ever recovered. But the question remains. So Shopco went belly up a few years ago. And well, let me just bring up this. Um, so here's Shopco. This is what it used to look like in the 90s. They went belly up, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. And they, but they retained their Shopco optical. So there's still Shopco opticals all around Wisconsin. And so I've oh, always thank wondered. God. That's a big, it's a big load off my mind. <laughs> well, I, I have a feeling they'd rather be full on shopcos, not just the opticals, but they're thriving with the opticals. There's tons of them. Okay. So what I did, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago, uh, I called them up to see if you were still banned from all shopcos. Cause after you got caught, mm -hmm. they banned you from shopco. Like you could never enter a shopco. Well, I wondered if that band continued into shopco into optical. optical right yeah right so over the years i've i've called and i've uh, just tried to get uh, an assessment of whether you're banned this year so here's a here's a look back at some of the other uh phone calls i made to shopco optical about whether nick is banned for stealing the incredible hulk sega game here we go i'm just wondering if you could say happy 44th nick from all of us at shopco and don't worry about the incredible hulk sega game could you do that i think he would love it for his birthday yeah, I guess I could be something. All right, cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, this is from everybody at Shopco. We're wishing Nick a happy 44th birthday. Um, just letting you know that all is forgiven for the Incredible Hulk Sega game. And we're hoping for many more years. So all was forgiven. That, that was in 2020. Well, let's see what happened in 2021. We lifted an Incredible Hulk game from Shopco. And... He got banned from all Shopcos. Like, you know, he's just, I, I, I'm I, sure that he wonders if you guys are okay with it. And last year I called you guys and you said you're okay with it. I just want to make sure that you guys are still okay with it. Like, like all is forgiven. Uh, as far as I know. So all is still forgiven at that point. This is last year. This is Rhonda. How can I help you? Hey, my name is Joe. I'm calling from a show called VCR Party, and I called you guys last year. I don't think I talked to you. He uh, shoplifted an Incredible Hulk video game from Shopco, and he was is he allowed to go back in, or are you guys are you guys cool? Is everything absolved? Well, here, here's the question: Are you guys cool? Is everything absolved? Are you guys cool? Is everything absolved? Okay. Yeah, I don't really know anything about that, so I really can't say. So Nick, you were as of last year, you were rebanned from Shopco Opticals. I think it's an accurate last rating February. of that, that response. Yeah. Have you have you been have you been to a Shopco Optical since then? No, no, I okay. have been tempted, but I have not set foot in there. Okay. You, you, you know what eye gouge says on the uh, boards is the hardest thing to explain when wearing a hard to explain T-shirt is you're supporting a. <laughs> Shopco shoplifter. I think that's true. I know it really is. Yeah, yeah you don't want to. And and a music land and Sam Goody shoplifter as well. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. But I got away with it. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. <laughs> and it's and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or I might just be saying that to, to sound cool. Uh, all right. So here's how the uh, Shopco optical phone call went this year. Nick, are you on the edge of your seat? Are you uh... fingers crossed? All right, fingers here we go. crossed. Here we go. I need reading glasses, so... Optical, Carol speaking. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Joe Pickett. I'm calling from VCR Party. I call you guys like once a year because oh. my buddy he had stolen a an Incredible Hulk Sega game and he got caught and he got banned from all Shopco's. Well, now that Shopco's not around anymore, I always call up just to make sure... I'm wondering if he's banned from Shopco Opticals as well. Do you know what I mean? This is bought out by a new company. We're not well, really, Shopco, you know, Shopco, we had wondered, but really, Shopco bought us out from, so I would say he probably is. 
he, he he's allowed to come in yeah i would think so. yes he's gonna be so happy about that awesome yeah all right thank you that makes sense because you guys don't you guys don't sell like sega games do you no we just sell glasses okay she's thinking about stealing glasses <laughs> so nick don't steal glasses yeah uh-huh. okay <laughs> she says as long as you don't steal glasses Unbanned, you're back. Thank you. Good. We're back the, at uh, it. The and temptation just, of uh, Sega games won't be there for you. I'm just glad that this traumatic moment in my life that made my sister cry and my parents question my morality it gets brought up every single year on my special day. So I'm gra- glad we got to relitigate well, that. Well, I've, I've tried to make your life easier. By no, no, like... I appreciate it. No. No. I appreciate you for that, brother. I do. <laughs> Can you imagine if you walked into a shop called Optical, they're like, hey, you, stop right there. And like you're... <laughs> There's still a picture of you up right next to the door. Yeah. Yep. It's me, I'll I got a few it. pounds on me and I got a I got a Hulk Sega game like this. Right. No, they have From they the have, security uh, cam. Yeah. They have an age progression that they yeah. update every year. Picture of my sister crying. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's got the whole the whole family disappointed. Well, your sister cried because you got uh Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Cuz huh. it was a big big incident in my family. So, yep. Appreciate you bringing it up every what, year. Why did you do it? Uh, I was trying to explore my own rebellion in a small, unimportant way as an 18-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was and me you, pushing the uh, boundaries of authority by uh, getting a Sega game I wanted. Okay. And you were broke and you didn't want to put on layaway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't okay. want to put on layaway. Yep. Um all right, do you have any more videos for uh, raviolis, or is that it? No, that's it. Let's close the book on raviolis. What are we doing next? Cyber videos? Yeah, I got uh, the intro for cyber videos. Let's get into that. Here we go. So, but she, right. brought up a, she brought up a good point, though, that... Um, that they got bought out by a different company, but they kept the name Shop Co-Optical. So it has yeah. nothing to do with the old company anymore. It was about brand awareness, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, so. Well, so this next, uh, the cyber video I'm going to show is, uh, I, I was thinking about a commercial that I saw, used to be on when I had um, Time Warner Cable here in New York. This would be on, if you're watching TV late at night or New York One, I guess, the local news channel, uh, this would come on. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what the hell? And then I was like, wait a minute, this place is in my neighborhood. It's in my neighborhood. And sure enough, it was online. It's a, an advertisement, a commercial for a, a place called Gallagher's 2000. <laughs> Gallagher's 2000. It's out of this world. Yeah, a few blocks from me, but yeah, so the aliens, they saw the babes calling to them on their, uh, I don't know, their receiver in their spaceship, okay. and they decided to stay there because they're attracted. I think they're attracted to sexy Earth women. So that's, okay. Them enjoying themselves at Gallagher's. They, they were we all. Yeah. Yep. No. So yeah, the aliens decided to stay, even though their mission was complete. That was the story of that commercial. I'm sure that the Gallagher's 2000 is still around, right? I don't know. I mean, there are uh, strip clubs like underneath the bridge by me still, but I don't know if it's still. Is it, George? Can you do some research on that? Yeah. No, I've been there. It's. Oh uh... uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no, no way. I doubt it. Uh, yeah. With advertising like that, I can't imagine that they're still there. I go for uh, the aliens. I got to be honest. Steve, what do you got for uh, next still birthday open. cyber video? So still, I, uh, I still have open. one that was oh, sent still by. Open? Uh, yeah. Wow. Nice. Uh, sent by Jill uh, Tomanowski. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I was so flustered when I started this is I was searching for a better uh, birthday one for Nick. So I was searching vegan athletes for Jock Sham. But I think the one that. I ended up settling on is good because I feel as though it's very much a uh, Nick Joe relationship at work. If you guys ever got an a office job, so here is my uh, jock shams. All right. 
And then you just have to hit the uh, share screen button. Uh -huh. oh, there you go. Right, there we go. There we go. All right. Binner, knock it off. It's our first day, man. You're going to get us in trouble. God. Chill, man. Seriously, here comes the boss. Let's make a good impression. Hey, boys. Got the first day nerves out of the way yet? Ricky Do Gervais? Nervous? Good to go, boss. How do we look? Unbelievable. I'll let you guess who I thought was Nick and who I thought was Joe in that. Mm. Uh, Joe on the left, Nick on the right? Uh, yes. Okay. Joe yep. was the That's uh, I thought. goalkeeper. I, yeah. I like that they tried to do like one of those ESPN commercials where like the mascots are like making yeah. copies on the in the break yeah. room or something. Yeah. But uh, very poorly. Yeah. Exactly. But they didn't Just do a very good job with it. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh George, solid jog him. What's on your uh playlist uh for cyber videos? Well, first I want to give Nick uh his birthday present. Um I didn't want to get you a, a thing. I wanted to get you an experience. Um, and okay. first, I have to say that, Nick, you are unlike other people of our generation in that I think you unironically, uncynically enjoy things. It's hard for me to wrap my head around, but it's um, it's something we need to celebrate on this day and every day. And it, it dovetails with Joe. When Joe was on shrooms, he was he was that way, too. And um, but that dynamic, oh. you, I think of you guys as um, Joe is sort of the Old Testament God, and Nick is sort of like the the kind Jesus, Jesus right? And Steve yeah. is sort of like the the Holy Ghost hovering over over. What, what are you party. then? Are you God? Are you just like the regular old God then? Right? I I am the um, I'm the televangelist hoping to capitalize on whatever you guys have going on. Okay, <laughs> okay. right. So the yeah. yeah. Um. So Nick, I uh, got you. Um, break dancing lessons at Dynasty Breaking in Astoria, Queens. Oh, um, hell yeah. Now, the thing that's funny about this, well, at least at first, is that it's for kids. So I was envisioning this as, <laughs> as you know, a bunch, a bunch of like 11 to 13 year olds and, uh -huh. and then hovering over them or standing yeah. above them was you. And then there'd be, it'd be like an 80s movie of that. But when I called up, they, they wouldn't put you in a class with kids. So you're going to get a private private lessons and um <laughs> then a um that might be worse <laughs> this, this sticker warning may spontaneously start talking about break dancing for your car because oh, i have great. a feeling that's gonna be your new thing also you um uh at um the car will start talking about it or or, or nick yes will. the car okay um and then at great neck music conservatory in great neck long island uh lessons ventriloquism lessons so you can oh wow so th these are these are things that you enjoy things. It's weird. I, I, so try to, yeah. So we want to hear about it. <laughs> you and, enjoy okay. things. It's weird. I just, no, I, I, well, I like the concept. I'm, I'm Nick, will you them. actually, will you actually do these things? Like, will you actually I'll like certainly give, I'll give one of them a shot. I'll, I mean, I'll give one a, of them. A, cla a class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meaning a one class. Yeah. I don't know that I'm in it for the long haul. I, I'm more of a dabbler. I don't like to master anything, but I I'd certainly like to dabble and at least try it. Sure. I just want to see you doing a windmill on an episode of VCR Party. Okay, here's well, the that video. I can do now. Okay. Um, so on the the evening news is filled with, or at least used to be. No, it still is. It, it like um, prurient stories about uh, like sex shops and prurient. Of, yes. Prur oh, I've just made that connection now. Prur prurient <laughs> prurient. Go on, okay. George. And okay. so. <laughs> <laughs> And so the, these, this is the local news trying to get, trying to uh, moralize about sexuality, a topic that is associated with you on this show. I don't know about in real life. So here are erotic news stories. And Amazon is now worth more than the nation's biggest retailer. The online store is currently valued at $264 billion. You know why? Wow. Because they sell sex toys, and Walmart can't or won't sell sex toys. Amazon does. A friend of mine works in the uh, warehouse. He says they sell a ton of them. Yeah. I'm just telling you how it is. Uh, They're trying to eat breakfast. Well, yeah, but nobody else will tell you this, but that's the reason. The owner of a local adult store <laughs> is being told to take her advertising indoors. For several months, Trish Smith has dressed up in somewhat risque costumes, dancing in front of her Portsmouth business, 
It's called Posh and Naughty. Window displays are supposed to get your attention, and this one at a North Park adult toy store certainly does. Adult the toy store. We're drumming up controversy for no you reason. You can't tell by that name what they sell. The window displays leave no doubt. Naturally, I check the place out for myself, and inside met the man behind the mask, the mannequin. What did you have in there that had a person complaining? I think it was like an inflatable pillow. Pillow may not be the best way to describe it. And you had the whole box in the window? Yeah, and it was in the window for like three months, three or four months. <laughs> like most small businesses, the gift spot is aggressively staying on top of shoplifters. Their latest post going viral, a couple caught in the act. It took just hours to identify them, but the joke was on voice. the thief. He claimed to us <laughs> that <laughs> once he got home, the product didn't work. Well, he didn't steal the charger. Check this out. A robber walks into a San Bernardino adult store just before closing time, armed with a gun, aiming it at store employees. But those employees were not buying it. Well, at one point, the guy grabs her, and that's when a coworker starts throwing adult toys at the robber to get him to back off. They come in handy, I'm telling you. <laughs> but they do got some weight on them if they're hit hard enough. <laughs> a local man's business selling sex toys is not sitting well with the neighborhood in which he parks his billboard van. Well, here's one of a man's two vehicles. You see the name of the business on the side. He says it's genius, and he says people love his vehicles when they're driving through the neighborhood, but it's a different story when they're parked outside of someone's home or outside their business, or in this case, outside of a church. Oh, <laughs> This man, John Bird, loves his work van that he keeps parked on his street in Pacific Beach. Even nicknamed it. I present to you a little creepy, the 1970s Ford Econo line. John sells sex toys. But the novelty is I hate that I'm on that guy's side. I know. Christian church <laughs> with an annex called God's Garage. And when street parking is limited, you'll find John's van right outside. This morning, a police department in California is taking an unusual approach to catch porn pirates red handed. Porch pirates, yes. Oh. That is all the time we have for this Saturday night. Saturday Night Live is next with a new one with John Goodman as host. We'll be back tomorrow after football. Hope to see you. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so they got a let's get the fuck out of here on local news. Classic. That's what I say every time before, uh, right after we hit stop on this. So. No, Dick should be saying it any second now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting there. Yeah, that uh, was a phenomenal montage. Uh, Great montage, yeah. and I love being associated with theft and sexuality in front of my whole family <laughs> that watches this show. So thanks, everybody. <laughs> what a birthday miracle, Joe. What, what do you got? I got an, what I am. I knew that this show was going to go long because uh, we still have another phone call, and it's not a short one. <laughs> uh, that we, we have to play a song at the end. I got to show another video. So I'm just going to show you one IMG here. It has nothing to do with Nick's birthday. Um, uh, who sent this one? Brad sent this one. This you is the last minute. It. You can skip this one if you want. We can just move on. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're here. We might as well just do it. Uh, it's IMG 4902. Uh, Brad from Iowa sent this one. Uh, he called it Burping Man in Pig Mask. <laughs> You had about 78 views. Oh, it's quite a bit. <laughs> I sped it up because we got a lot of we got a lot oh. of real ways to go. So wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that's our cyber videos for this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting batch. Interesting batch of cyber videos. Um, what's up next? Uh, let's let's uh, talk about nice things. Do you want to? Okay. Uh, we got some nice things. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's go through them. Do you got the right. you got the graphic for it? Mm, no. Okay. I don't. All right. Sorry, well, but we can um, show the nice things all the same. Okay, let's just do it without a graphic. I, I mean, I'm, I feel a little off doing it that way, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, so do I. Uh, okay. But I don't have it handy. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, let me um, let me play this. Uh... <laughs> What do I got? Oh, I got uh, oh Dave Hawkins. Okay, so this is a nice thing. So uh, Dave Hawkins, uh, the talking squirrels guy from Grand Rapids, Michigan, he, he gives he's given us lots of videos. Um, he gave a, a, a promo for talking squirrels. So uh, he has a set now. We've been talking about doing this for like six months. This is going to be our first ever non VHS show. 
on our channel, on our YouTube channel. We're going to do maybe like three episodes, see how it goes. We might pull it if it's not good or if, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't fit. Um, but here's a, here's how Talking Squirrels is going to begin. This is the intro uh, graphic for that. Dave's going to talk about squirrels at length. Squirrel! He held a squirrel once. He comes from Michigan. Dave has ferrets. He does not have squirrels. Because <gasps> ferrets are longer and squirrels are stronger. Excuse me. Talking Squirrels. The Icelandic Volcano. Hey everybody at the Found Footage Festival, and hey all you Melindas out there. Good to see my fellow people. It's me, Dave Hawkins from Grand Rapids. I just want to let everyone know that I'm working on talking squirrels and walking squirrels, and I'll have a lot more for you as soon as possible. I've even got my own copy of the Yankee Droll Flippers, which has the entire Yankee Droll Flipper family. Whipper, Dipper, Tipper, and Flipper. The best anti-squirrel bird feeders you can get straight out of Rhode Island. And for an extra bonus, behold, the squirrel launcher. I don't know about you, but I'll take eight. Have a good day. And my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Talking squirrels. <laughs> Icelandic volcano. So I'm excited about that oh, show. I, I think boy. I have high hopes for it. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna do well. I think it might be one of our highest because uh, everybody has a squirrel story, and he's gonna have people on. He's gonna talk about squirrels. I was wondering if maybe it should be called Hawkins Talking Squirrel. Hawkins, because his last name's Hawkins. Like Hawkins yeah, Talking Squirrels. Yeah, more esoteric. Yeah. Or Hawkins Squirrels. He's selling the idea of he's hawking squirrels. He's hawk. How about Hawkins Hawking, hawking squirrels. squirrels? Yeah. 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 Uh, sure. All right. We're, yeah. we're still workshopping it and. Uh, let us know in the comments. Um, Steve, are you looking at uh, comments? Because uh, we're, we're live tonight. So, uh, well, let me also just say that that's uh, what we call a nice thing. Oh, nice work. <laughs> nice graphic. I have been watching comments, and I liked uh, Joe Blevins said, Talking Squirrels has been in the works longer than Avatar 2. <laughs> It's been it's been it's been in the works longer than your nephew's vanity plate, Steve. That is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I texted him. <laughs> let me let me shove some nice things that. Uh, uh, Colin David sent in. These are like uh, custom cards. Um, these are uh, drawings that he did on cards. So this is uh, Those Rem are cool. Rem Lazar. This is, I love this drawing of Dark Lord Blood here. And who's this? Do you know? This is looks familiar, but I don't know what character that is. You have any idea? It looks familiar. Like He's a ringing a bell. Any Melinda's? Can they? I don't Put it right up there. Put it right up in the. Okay. Yeah. Is anybody? Oh. Blurry, oh, but... it's, oh, it's the uh, May. Oh, yeah. I think it's May Tim guy. Tim Bogart from Vanilla Fudge. Yeah, yes. that's who that is. Okay. That's who it is. Yep. Steve, you have a nice thing to show off. Uh, I do. I want to show off. It's part of my uh, sellout, but it's one of the things that I don't think I did a good job on the sellout, so I apologize. But um, let me see if I can show it to you guys, and you can see. But I thought this was kind of cool. If you go there, you could buy a VCR Party Live mini skirt, which I think would make Whoa. a great gift for somebody for their birthday. So you, this is one of the things you can also buy uh, dresses. Who so made dresses. that? Like, who's capitalizing on that? Should we be? Uh... This is my sellout. <laughs> this is. Uh, um, Wait, you're you're making Karina? that? This is Karina. Karina. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your. Sorry, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. That's your. Yes. I'm so sure you get Karina it, will give us commission. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Capitalize on. Yeah, yeah. Melinda's can absolutely capitalize on everything. I just thought that the if they're not a Melinda, they can't scary. capitalize. Yeah. Speaking yeah, yeah. speaking of uh, art from uh, viewers, this is a uh, Don Sparrow made this art of George and I for Willie's Garage, <laughs> and then made and then sent us T-shirts. George, there's one for you in the oh, office. Wow. But yeah, this is. I don't know if the light's really hitting it, but this is George and I as Melmacian characters. Um, Your and, genitals uh, are covered, mine are not. Nope, as in real life. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> that is another cool thing. So thanks to Don Sparrow and the crew for uh, those shirts and that artwork. Speaking of gifts, so you remember like the, the Christmas episode, uh, I think it was, I think Bob Hedges sent me a gift of ranch-flavored soda. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, 
I don't, I don't know. And I, I had it in the refrigerator for a long time. And and Nick, we were here a couple of weeks ago. We were shooting the poster for Chop and Steel. That's mm-hmm. the reason that we're like unshaved. Um, and uh, the the crew, like we went in afterwards, we were having beers and somebody was like, what's this ranch soda? I was like, oh, let's try and drink it. And one of the photographers took a swig of it and he's like, oh, it actually tastes like ranch. And I was like, oh, does it really? I want to try it. So he started rolling video of it. <laughs> and it, it actually it actually tastes like ranch like and, and i started hmm. gagging and so i'm going to show you this, this should be a joe's filth corner actually it's carbonated it, it's carbonated <laughs> and it actually tastes like liquid Ugh. ranch Ugh. and it's and it's hard to, it was oh, here just watch the video here we go for now to try the ranch hold on let me just start at the beginning here here, here we go for now to try the ranch uh, soda and i smelled it and i almost kind of gagged it's uh it kind of smells milky. There's definitely some dairy elements to it. Ah, <laughs> that was a real gag. That wasn't like a bit. That wasn't a I don't think I can do Yes you can. Are yes, you serious? You can. Yes, it, you how... can. <laughs> if I throw up seriously. Just do it on the ground. Yeah. Just do, you throw up it. on the ground. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's worse than Batman cereal. Bit, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is for real. This is, uh, this is with that mustache. This is seamless. <laughs> Where is it? The garbage can was missing because we because we oh, had we because because we off. moved everything. Yeah, we moved everything around. The garbage can wasn't there. Oh yeah. Uh, Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> the garbage can's always over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that was it. I d- ended up not throwing up. Oh, mind Thank, over matter. Uh, it's always wow. mind over matter. But like it, it was worse than Batman cereal. It actually tasted like ranch in liquid form, and that's not how I, I love Ooh. ranch. I typically love ranch. Huge it, fan of ranch. It's funny you mention that because I, I, um, we used to go to the Wendy's Super Bar. You remember that used to, at Wendy's they used to have like you could make your own salads or uh, briefly like tacos and burritos and stuff. And then there was a dessert bar. My dad went and got uh, uh, vanilla pudding. And he sat down. And he started eating it, and he said, "Oh, this is ranch dressing." <laughs> and then because he refuses to throw out food, he ate the whole thing. <laughs> oh. But he didn't uh, throw up. Not in the least. He he has an iron he thinks everything is good. I'm picturing like a gelatinous, like congealed ranch that he thought was pudding. It was horrifying to see. <laughs> just a little window. So but he just ate he just ate ranch. Yeah, I mean, with a spoon. I'm just almost kind of gagging just thinking about that. <laughs> well, if you threw up on Nick's birthday. That would be a an, iceberg, miracle. an iceberg lettuce salad. Absolutely. It's perfect for ranch. Dipping French fries in, perfect. But other than that, ugh, it was no. in one of those like bowls that you would put applesauce in. Right, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Putting at a salad bar, too. That That's gross on its own. But right. the fact that it was ranch. Um, <laughs> do we get any more nice things? Yeah, or just can a I, couple. Can I, OK. All what right. So uh, one, I just want to say that uh, one nice thing is our Roku channel. You could be watching this right now on Roku. Well, not right now, but, you know, an hour later on Roku. It's got all of our uh, shows in there and you can watch on your TV very easily without having to beam stuff. Plus playlists and um, our buddy put this together, uploads all our new stuff here and uh, it's gaining popularity. So if you have a Roku box, uh, you know, watch the Weird Al movie, then download our channel. Um and the other thing I want to show off is, oh, our website. So a couple things. Driver 23 is now available as a digital download. That is the American movie of rock documentaries uh, and the, the follow-up to Atlas Moth. We are the exclusive distributors of the uh, the Blu-ray, right? We've got the yeah. Blu-ray, uh, Driver 23 right here with a bunch of extras oh, in it. Yeah. And it's the best. It, it is the. It is you explained it perfectly. Like it is the American movie of rock and roll. This guy. There's two documentaries on here, and man, it, you can also watch it on Rewindo, our our streaming service. Um, but man, Driver Twenty Three, uh, a digital download now. So it, if you want to own it, this movie, like it, it was, it got really popular. In like it got into all the film festivals in like 2000, 2001. 
and the New York Times reviewed it, Village Voice reviewed it, all positive reviews, and then 9-11 hit when they released it, and then it got, you know, no nobody saw it, so everybody kind of forgot about it. Another tragedy of that event. Yeah, exactly. The, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but now, 23 years later, we're doing... We have three and ways we have to watch exclusive. it. Yes, exactly. Streaming, download, or Blu-ray. And we just launched this new service. So, you know, we do a cameo service. You could, you know, wish your lover a happy Valentine's Day by hiring us. We call it Rent to Joe and Nick, uh, inspired by Rent a Friend. And we will do a mini 15-minute or sometimes longer uh, episode of VCR Party for you with videos picked out for your special someone. It, it's way better than Cameo because Cameo, yeah. they just like yammer on for like five minutes and they, you know, they just say yeah. the same thing. We make a custom show for you. So yeah. now we have, uh, we've invited some friends, some all stars from the community, including Jack Rebney, who's uh, 92 years old. I 93. Think, right? He's 93, 93 now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He agreed to do it. And, and he, uh, he has a he has a buddy who's a tech guy and they can record it. So you can actually have Jack Rebney record a greeting for you. And yeah, I mean. Also, uh, Rem Lazar. This is Jack Mulcahy. We yeah. know him from the Snickers commercial, but also the totally bananas children's movie that we are the Blu-ray distributors of. Uh, he's gonna wish you, and and boy, he's a pro. He's been Rem Lazar, for like and he has a, he has years. a guitar. He has a guitar too, so he could do guitar songs. Um, yeah, for for the Rem Lazar l- lover in your life, get them uh, Jack Mulcahy message. Hot off the presses here, we got <laughs> Dark Lord Blood. This is yes. for real, Joe. He you tracked to down. It. You tracked down Dark Lord Blood. There he is today. I went to his house. Yeah, yep. I went to Dark Lord Blood's house. He's the coolest dude ever. But he's he, he was the guy who got. They they would book him as the Satanist on all these daytime talk shows back in the Satanic Panic days, and uh, but and he was so good he had this growl he had this like guttural growl that he might do for you on your he uh, can still do it yeah he can, he can still, still do, do it, it. Yeah. Uh, but also just a cool dude and he always includes special effects in his videos mm. we hire him all the time to do I think he, Nick I think he did a birthday video for you he a did. couple of years ago yeah. yeah it's uh yeah so anyway we wanted to be to have the Melinda's here viewing uh be the first to know that that's a new service we're offering and who knows maybe we'll add some other weirdos who else do you want to see on there um yeah let us know who you want to see we we got uh, Mark Borchardt is going to do it too from from American movie Mark Borchardt has agreed to be uh on on our service for this so yeah um that's coming soon um what else we got anything else nice things go ahead let's get to the next call okay here we go so do you remember midwest hemorrhoid treatment center nick of course yeah okay great jingle. It, it was a great jingle that did it win the toe tapping tournament i can't remember uh if not here's how it went and it probably should have won midwest hemorrhoid treatment center don't suffer in silence midwest hemorrhoid treatment center don't suffer in silence. My bl- okay, so we were big fans of this. Probably like, yeah, right, right when we started doing VCR Party, like 2019, 2018. Uh, I, for your birthday, I decided to call them up and ask them to wish you a happy birthday. And it went well. And then it didn't go so well. And then it uh, kind of went well. And now, well, let's just watch. Let's, let's just take a look back through memory lane of Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center, phone calls about Nick's birthday, wishing Nick a happy birthday. My buddy's birthday's coming up. He's gonna be 43 years old next week. And I'm wondering if you could say, happy 43rd birthday, Nick, from all of us at Mid- Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. I'm wondering if that's possible. Okay. Okay. I, I can do that. Okay, great, awesome. Hey, Nick, happy birthday, happy 43rd. We just wanted to wish you all a very happy birthday from all of us here at Midwest Emory Treatment Center. Oh, you nailed it. For my buddy Nick's 44th birthday, just say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us here at uh, Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Hope you have a happy 44th. Somebody, whoever I talked to last year, did it for his 43rd last year. I don't know if it was you. Do you remember that? I do not, actually. So oh, okay. let me um, take a and then I'll just have the manager give me a call back. Just to say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Or something. They're not all home runs. They're not mm-hmm. always going to be home runs, right? It's a journey. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So you, you, you get different employees. You never know which, what you're going to get. 
All right. So here's, uh, yeah, February 2021. Just to say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center or something like that. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Thanks. All right. Uh, I'm ready to go when you are. I'm, uh, I'm recording this. So here we go. Yes. Oh, that was the best one yet. Because my buddy Nick and I. So this was last year's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. That. We could just see the new ones uh, going forward here. But... No, I, I think it's more important to like know how it is historically. Don't you think, <laughs> Steve? Steve, you're not in your head. You agree with I, that? I, right? Yeah, I like the historical view of it. Yeah, okay. to see how it goes. Maybe yeah. not at 10:23, but okay. Go ahead. <laughs> we love the jingle. The Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center don't suffer in silence. And uh, yeah, perfected. yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. That's the best one yet. You guys keep topping yourselves. We've been here 11 years. We know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> she said, we know who you are at this point. All yeah. right. So I called up this afternoon. And here, here, here's how it went. So the, the and all, also the audio recording. I don't know what was going wrong, but I, I put subtitles up uh, <laughs> so you can understand. But like, you, you'll okay. be able to. Okay. You know, right. <laughs> Nick's trying to move it along. Uh, but the subtitles are uh, just the words that are at the bottom of the screen. That's what subtitles are. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> In case you don't know uh, what they're actually saying, then you yes. can actually just read so it. Without further ado. <laughs> Treatment Center. How can I help you? Hey, my name is Joe. I'm calling from VCR Party. Uh, this is my annual phone call to you guys uh, for uh, my buddy Nick, his uh, birthday. <laughs> she, she actually said that. She wow. said, you're, you're, you're late. You usually call a few days before yeah. his birthday. Like, they actually keep track of it. That's Wait, amazing. Are you serious? You, you were expecting the phone call? Oh, on Friday, you might call a few days before his birthday. I do. I, she knows. She knows. <laughs> I usually call like a few days. I called Amazing. on the day. Of, they probably got it on their calendar. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. The, uh, the hemorrhoid treatment center, Nick. It's a it's a couple days before my birthday, so it's still early. It's, I think uh, that they yeah. I think that they were concerned that I wasn't going to call them this year, mm -hmm. or that and, something and, terrible had happened to you, polyp related or yeah related. Yeah, do I his birthday in the calendar in our calendar so i was expecting you to call that right they have it your birthday well, in the here i am better late than never you have an address i have something i want to send you in the mail no Whoa. way yes we do have an address you ready for it okay, Remember, go ahead. okay. oh well, man you know? is this gonna be a surprise or can, can, can you want to okay yeah i was waiting for you to call i tried to look on your guys' website to see if you had it address but i was like i'll just wait till he calls and he calls i'll get his address Whoa! <laughs> honestly like if i if i ever need hemorrhoid treatment i'm definitely going to you guys i'm gonna fly there for it i don't care i don't care if my insurance doesn't cover it either cool so do you mind doing the uh the birthday greeting to nick come on over here and sing with me okay <laughs> we'll just tell him happy birthday from all those girls here okay hold on i'm gonna put you on speaker phone. Great. All us girls. All right, we're ready when you're ready. All right, I'm recording. Go for it. Happy, happy birthday, Nick, from the girls at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Have a happy, happy birthday. Don't suffer in silence. <laughs> oh. They're sending you a present. Oh, my God. What do I owe this? Wow. Best yeah. birthday ever. I'm, I'm going to say, you. too, I don't know if this would be a gift, but if I ever get a hemorrhoid, I'm going there, too, to get treatment. A hundred percent, for sure. Yeah, exactly. They've won my uh, loyalty. I have full confidence that if I'm on the golf course with my buddies, that they'd be able to zap off those hemorrhoids. <laughs> Whatever those are, I'm sure they're good at dealing with them. I mean, but they have your birthday on their that's calendar, That's amazing. Actually. I really, that is very, that's the best one uh that's ever happened. Those those ladies are, are amazing, and uh, please support them wherever and somewhere in the Midwest. The, there's two locations in the okay. Kansas City area. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, 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 I, and I said go Chiefs to, to them too. So, okay. Uh, uh, that was great. That was well done. I appreciate that one. That was very yeah. nice. What, was it, what, what did you give me for my birthday? I'm trying to think. What was two it, uh... vintage t-shirts that were each about 60 bucks. Okay. So, yeah. So, each about 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, not quite. 
<laughs> I think a total was about 120, actually. Yeah, for both of those. Oh, so. with shipping and everything. Once you count the shipping. No, no, oh, that's just, without uh, shipping. You just got it off of eBay then, huh? Yeah, yeah, eBay and Etsy. Oh, okay. Know? So it's just on your computer. Okay. Yeah, some that's thoughtful cool. things that I... Uh, Rather than on your phone. Thoughtful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just typed in Wisconsin Dells into the search bar and then... Okay, cool. No, I had those picked out and uh, bought them well in advance for your birthday. So. Steve, what are people... You, dude. <laughs> You. Steve, what are uh, what's uh, what are people saying? What's the uh... Belinda's want to be able to rent a message from George? So we've just got to get <gasps> you guys got to got to get that behind that. Oh, the Belinda what? spoke. It was loud and they just want to date George. They don't really they don't care about the renting. Listen, part. They sometimes just wanna... it starts with a message. Starts with a message. <laughs> from George. George, can we talk about your dating or no? Can we not talk about it? There's nothing. This there's nothing to talk about. Hmm. There's there's no uh, there's no there there. But if what you did... happen to be on Ashley Madison, you might find him uh, somewhere. Did... I don't know. What's the millionaire dating thing? Is that it? Yeah. D- didn't, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, something about uh, you. Oh, didn't they used to do like um, uh, where you can auction off like a date with somebody? Maybe we should auction off a date with George or something. Like, wasn't that like a 90s thing? Like where you can like yeah, have a date auctions. with a person. Yeah. Hunk yeah. auctions. And like you can like date somebody. Um like for, well, for several years or like to, just a one a one shot thing. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying okay. to make a oh, that's, trying to make that's a about standard here. for me. Yeah. Well, we'll we will take that under consideration. I want to make a couple quick announcements so we got to get out of here. New Strange Tapes is out and he has a video <laughs> called Central Reality from the Makers of Cybersex featured in this and I tracked down a copy of this as well. This might be video of the year. It's going to be played during a special segment for February that uh, has been curated by Scott. And speaking of content, the new Bastard Tapes is out today, too. That's our podcast about audio weirdness, and it's in celebration of our 250th episode. Uh, Tim, our illustrious host, uh, picked out the number one toe tappers uh, in his estimation that have been featured on VCR Party. So going to engender a lot of debate. I uh, listen to this episode and and definitely weigh in on whether he he got it right i think he did like he kept surprising me and there were some songs that i forgot had forgotten about mm-hmm. and uh but but he got all the right ones i think i don't know lots of classics yeah, yeah. Great app. lots of classics um all right oh hey we're on riff tracks we were on riff tracks a couple weeks ago like two mondays ago mm-hmm. uh we were on riff tracks the uh mystery science theater guys they they do this thing where they uh but they have like a monday night show where they uh play this game and then you watch some videos and you play the game again and we did that we played the game and we watched some of our found footage videos i think we watched what did we watch dusty dragon mm-hmm. yeah and the dragon. uh and the moose lodge video and the moose lodge entirety. video yep. yeah and then we played the game and uh it was me against nick against peter against like two other people who were watching the show and you'll never guess who won um well peter. just no yeah, he did. He, no, I won. Well, we played twice. You won once. Peter won the other I, one. Well, I won. The, I won the bigger game. He won the first game. <laughs> he won the first game. Okay. Because because I was just learning it at that point. So so won. So I no, I won the second one, which was like the bigger game where you played more rounds. And uh, the game. Also, the game uh, is. I want to announce that I am polyp free. I uh, my polyps were benign and they were abnormal. But you know, I think when it comes to polyps, why be normal? And uh, they were <laughs> abnormal, but they turned out to be uh, uh, just fine. So I got to go back in three years. Joe, my, what's your... my polyps were benign, and they said they were 100% normal. But back to Riff Good. Tracks. <laughs> so what the, what they do in this game is that, is that you have to write the funniest joke. And if you write the funniest joke for every scene, EP mode then this week is a special win, mystery and video won. that you're going to love. It's, it's called, on YouTube. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Riff Tracks. Riff Tracks video is on, on YouTube. Genesis. You can watch the whole thing. Video Genesis, it's a mysterious corporate video we're going to be watching with Lenora from Midnight Rental this Thursday on my actual birthday, so watch that EP mode if you're a patron. Joe, what are we going to go out on tonight? We're going to go out on Magnus's song that you heard at the beginning and uh, put together a little video uh, for your birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. 47 years young, as Thank I like you to say. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, Magnus wrote this uh, vegan, vegan man song which is a spoof of bob from hull's spoof of your girlfriend Allie's spoof of enter sandman yes. where instead of enter sandman it's a, a vegan vegan man and we'll be right back right after these right after these words uh if if we had been prepared we could have done better 
for Nick's birthday. Don't let my terrible sellout this week uh, make you miss out on Karina's art. You can get leggings, stickers, T-shirts, everything you want. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. Happy birthday, Nick. Talking Tulip, totally Tulip. Wow. Write some shit off your E, post apologies, go home to catch some Z's. Treats of s'mores, chicken grease, and a cheddar cheese, and I'm never weak, yeah. The cream soil brown eye open, gripping the cereal tight. Take some sips, show some clips. Blur some wings to hide that you're a sexual man. As I record your meditation, of my ass the cereal will go. Of my ass the cereal will go. Last year I bared my meaty cheeks. Last year I bared my meaty cheeks. And taped on some rejuvenates. And taped on some rejuvenates. Hush, little teeny bear, don't <laughs> say a word. <laughs> and never mind that noise you heard. In his corner of excitement Nick's making love in his outtent <laughs> Well, hello, Belinda Jim's coins in here <laughs> When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing All right, I gotta go That's all, that's it Let me see that one Rocks are done Gotta sleep Bye. That's it. That it did done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a my not there for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Cheerio. Have a good day. Sizzler. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. Good luck from all of us at Hagen. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.